All right, let's get the other side done. So unfortunately, there's no great mirroring of tools on this part of the process. So we do have to do everything that we did on this side, we've got to do on this side. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up all of our IKs just like we did before. So we'll grab our IK tool and we'll click our hip down to our ankle. And we're going to call that our right IK ankle. And then we'll go back to our tool and we're going to go from our ankle to our ball. And this will be our right IK ball. And then we're going to go back to the IK tool and do the same thing from the ball to the toe. Right, IK, ball. Okay. Um, oh, whoops, that's toe. Oh, uh, yeah. There we go. Name it right. Here we go. Okay. Now, what we want to do is we want our uh, right controls to mirror our left controls. So if we move on translate X, then, and we were to move both of them, it would move the opposite. So what we're going to do is we are going to, we want to mirror that functionality. And we're going to do that by mirroring our controls. So <clears throat> we are going to go to our left leg control group. So just above this. And we're going to duplicate it. So control D will duplicate it. It's obviously going to call everything left leg still. So we'll have to rename that. But... Now what we're going to do is we're going to group that control. Um, so we'll hit control G and it creates this group and the group is always centered at its parents location, which in this case is the pelvis control. Um, and that is totally fine, but we're going to rename it. This is going to be our right leg orient group. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come up because this is at um, zero on the X on the translate X, we are going to mirror it over to the other side on X. And we're going to do that by changing our scale X to negative one. And now it gives us a control at the bottom, which is excellent. And then you'll notice we, ought, we did actually get all of our joints for our reverse foot are in there. Um, and then it just created these duplicates, but they don't do anything. They're just empty nodes. So we're going to delete those because we don't need them. And then we're going to select the top of our chain here, that left leg group. And we're going to go to modify. And we're going to go to is it, oh, search and replace names. And we're going to search for L underscore. And we're going to replace it with an R underscore. And we're going to do it for the whole hierarchy. We're going to click apply. Great. It did it. We'll close that. It also duplicated this constraint. It is also an empty node as well. So we can delete that. We will need to recreate it. And then we're going to it added a one there. We're going to get rid of the one. OK, so now we have that. Now we need to take our right IK ankle. We'll middle mouse click and drag that to the RK are the reverse foot ankle. Then we'll do the ball to that reverse foot ball joint. And then we're going to do the toe to the reverse toe rotation group there, just like that. So now we have this set up just like the right side or the left side, I mean. And if we select these, um, as long as your tool is set to right now, world, we want it on object. So now if we select that and we move on our translate x it's going to move it opposite 
right? Um, it'll rotate, and then it's going to do the opposite on the rotate Y, and the opposite on the rotate um, Z, okay? But then the axes that you're expecting it to mirror, it will mirror. So the forward and the back, the up and the down are going to function exactly how you want. And then it's just the translate X and our rotate Y and rotate Z that are going to be mirrored. And the other ones are going to function just the way we would think they would. Uh, and so that is excellent. Now we just have to set up that. We have to set up all of our set driven keys for everything on this side in all of our constraints. So we're going to start, we're going to open up our connection editor, windows, general editors, connection editor with our right leg selected. And then we'll go to the bottom. We need the reverse foot. Uh, we need the toe stand, so that is going to be the toe, and we'll reload the right. So our toe stand is going to directly influence our rotate Y. And then we want our toe rotation to directly affect that rotation group. And we will select the rotate Y on that as well. So now those are set up just like we did on the other side. Here's our toe stand. Here's our toe rotation. And we are good with that. Now we need to set up our foot roll. So I will close this for now. And we need to select the reverse foot heel. And we'll control select the reverse foot ball and our rotate Y. And we'll go to edit, set driven key. And now that's set up and we just need our driver. So we'll load our driver and we're going to select our foot roll. And with everything set to zero, we're going to key it. Okay, now we're going to go here and we're going to go to reverse foot heel. And we're going to go to the reverse foot leg and we're going to go and we're going to type the negative 10 and the reverse foot heel will be negative 10 as well. And we will key that and then we'll go back to our leg control, type in 10 and go to our ball, the rotate Y and type in 10 and key. So now we have that functionality. Excellent. And we just need to extend that same, those same values to go on forever. So we're going to select that reverse heel, reverse ball again, and we're going to open up our graph editor and the heel. We'll do our tangent here, our linear tangent, and we're going to do a pre-infinity cycle with offset to go backwards, and then we'll select reverse foot ball. We'll do the linear handles there, and we're going to do a post-infinity um, cycle with offset, just like that. And now our foot roll is all set up. And go as far as we want it to. Hurrah! Okay, we'll zero that out. Um, we have our toe rot, our toe stand, our foot rolled. Now we need this control to follow um, the world when we want it to. So we need to go to that world orient group again. And we're going to control, select the right leg control group, not the orient group. And we're going to create a parent constraint. Just like that. And there's the parent constraint. And now we're going to select our control again. And we're going to open back up our connection editor. Right here. 
we're going to go to the bottom, we're going to connect our world, we're going to select our parent constraint, reload, and go to the bottom, and we're going to connect it to that world orient group weight zero. So that's going to turn it on and off. Okay, that is on, and this one is on, so it should function exactly how we want it to, and it does. How fantastic! Isn't that wonderful? It's wonderful. All right. Um, so yeah, all of that is looking really great. We are all set up with our reverse foot and our IK feet. Um, and then it just has that kind of fake FK action where it will follow the hips when we want it to. Um, and that is really great. Uh, let's change the color of these controls. So we'll go to the attribute editor. We're going to enable overrides. This is our left. I want that nice bright blue color right there. And I'll go to the right side and I'm going to go for the nice bright red color, which is right there. And now we have these two wonderful mirrored controls. Um, the other thing we can do is we can go into each of these. We don't need to see these. So we're going to turn our visibility on those joints off because we don't want to accidentally select those. And we're going to do the same thing on the right side with the reverse foot heel. And we'll turn visibility off. That will turn off the visibility of the IK handles, which we don't want our animators messing with because it will just screw up the rig. And we don't want that. So that is good. We have all of our functionality that we're looking to get just from this. And we are looking really pretty good. Um, <clears throat> next up, we're going to talk about um, there's a couple different solutions that I'm going to talk about, so I'll make two different videos. You can decide how you want to do it. Um, but they both solve this problem. Right now, this is looking really good. But you'll notice if I go too high up, it breaks my knee. Right? Um, and we do not want that. So there are two options. We can create a pull vector constraint. So that is this guy right here. Um, and that will force whatever the object is, it's usually sitting out here, it will force our IK handle to always look at that wherever it's at. Um, and so it will just always be pointing at it so that when we go here, it won't do that. The other option is called the no flip option. It's a tiny bit more um, complicated. There's a few more steps to it, but it allows you to have complete control of your knee without having it, uh, without having a pull vector constraint. So you won't have another control out here that you have to point all the time. You will have uh, an extra control over here that would allow you to bend your knee out to the side if you need it. So I will go over the pull vector knee in the next video and the following one will be the no flip knee. And that will get you a lot of functionality. So yeah, uh, we are looking really good so far. Really clean, our rig is looking great. Uh, so far, we've got some great functionality. Um, we are getting closer and closer. Good job.